YouTubers, Mike Martins here, Mike Martins Channel, Toronto New Condo Prices Drop over 20k in just a month. <gasps> Woo! Twenty thousand dollars in just a month. Look at this, guys. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Ah, Greater Toronto New Home Data is mixed, showing some improvements as well as flags. Atlas Group data shows that new home sales across the region ripped much higher in April. The rise of the new home sales were likely helped by impoverishments to prices. The price of a typical new single-family home is down from last year, and condos fell from all-time high to hit early this year. Detached prices are down. Condos uh, decelerate in growth. Decelerate in growth. I had to say that twice. The price of a typical new home made a mixed movement last month. The single-family home benchmark reached $1.1 million in April, down 0.3% from last year. Guys watching this in the States and other places, $1.1 million for a, a bungalow It's or a typical family house, not a mansion, okay? The condo apartment benchmark reached 758585 up 2.5% from last year. Both markets didn't change all that much from last year, but... The monthly details are worth diving into. Greater Toronto new home sales. So there it is. And total sales here. And there you go. And they're below. So it's it's you're starting to see a pattern here. Uh the monthly Price change bucked the annual trend in both segments. Single-family prices were, were up 0.28% from the month of April, which works out to an increase of $3,132. Condo apartment prices dropped 2.85% from the month before, dropping about $22,254 in value over a month for single-family homes. This is the first monthly improvement since November 2018. Condo apartments have slid for four consecutive months now, shedding about 45053 in value since prices peaked in January. Wow. Four consecutive months now, shedding about 45053 in value since prices peaked in January. A big jump in York Region helps push new home sales higher. So you're going to have different pockets in different areas which look more attractive. And obviously, it's going to prop up the benchmark and the price um, higher to make it, you know, it's going to look. But you have to look at it from a, I guess, like an artist would look at a picture. Picture has a thousand words or whatever. Well, you got to look at it that way and kind of pick your pockets and kind of see um, the complicated housing and financing and how complicated uh, things are right now for people to even secure financing and all that other crap and where things are headed and layoffs and minimum wage going up equally more layoffs. So lower prices last year's week sales made for an easy beat this year. There were 3,853 new homes sold in April, up 122.6% from last year. This is what we read on, on trends in the housing market, right? Remember? The city of Toronto represented 1,097 of those sales, up 69.8% from last year. A huge jump from last year, but still 1.41% for the medium 10-year 10 uh, 10 number of the month. Sales were still down from 2017, especially in Toronto. Remember 2017, guys? The great anomaly that never happened. That all real estate, organized real estate wants to sweep under the rug. There it is. York Region. Look at 2018. Boom, 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 boom. So everyone's like uh, uh, freaking out from this region right here. York Region, 1,496. So everyone's freaking out. That's doing well and this and this and that. But that's just one pocket. But everyone likes to forget the anomaly of 2017. Condo apartments made a similar move, but they're better than average for the month. There were 3,053 new condo apartment sales up, uh, sorry, in April, up 137% from the same month last year. The city of Toronto represented 1,043 of those sales, up 64.51% from last year. Sales are 0.7% from the 10-year median for the month, so they're about right where they should be. Sales of condos are still down from 2017, something to consider since inventory is much higher these days. Remember, guys, we have an oversupply on the Toronto market, Vancouver market, Sydney market, Melbourne market, New Zealand market, uh, London market, uh, Belfast, Dublin, 
uh, San Francisco, San Diego, Seattle, Portland, all oversupplies in the market. So huge oversupplies, and I've been talking about this for years, and they've been trying to sell us that supply versus demand, and if you don't buy now, you'll never own, and blah, 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 you'll be forever bought out of the markets. There's more new home inventory for for sale in Greater Vancouver. There were 18,287 new homes for sale in April, up 27.9% from last year. Condo apartments represented 13,707 of those listings, up 37.65% from last year. Unfortunately, new listing inventory isn't broken down by region. Sales rising faster than inventory imp- improved to sales activities last uh, uh, listings ratio. The SA- SALR reached 21.07%. In April, a big climb from 12.11% last year. When the ratio is above 20%, the market is a seller's market, right? Remember, guys? Where where prices are expected to rise below 12% is a buyer's market, and prices expected to fall between 12 and 20%, and the market is considered balanced. Prices are just right. The ratio is far from perfect measure, and this is the first time since October we've seen it above 20%. Uh, all the way best... 20, 20% all the way best to use this number as a starting point and make sure it didn't just make a brief visit to the market type. There's the Greater Toronto New Home Sales to Active. There it is. It's slightly going up, but nothing's going to be 2017. Never. Last month, the market was very mixed with a lot of positive indicators as well as warning flags. Sales are higher across all segments and were at more typical levels. Single-family home prices showed negative annual growth, but a positive climb for the month. Condo apartments made the opposite price move, positive on the year, lower lower on the month. The last one is one of the biggest takeaways considering the size of the monthly drop. So you're looking at right now a drop of 20k in one month. In condo prices in Toronto. This is just the beginning, guys. West Vancouver condos, uh, condos were around one, one point two, one point three million just for a condo, and they've been seeing twenty to forty thousand dollar drops, in 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 some areas in, in in a quarter. So it's very interesting to see what's happening with uh, the the uh, capital outflow restrictions uh, from China has been really doing a number on Western economies. And English-speaking countries are the ones that are suffering the most with their come in and buy us out mentality. We are open for business. Come in and buy all our houses. It doesn't matter about the people living there. We'll just print money to to support our, our public sector. Anyways, guys, this is from Better Dwelling, our guys down in Better Dwelling. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would like to know what's happening on the ground. And remember, I don't give out financial advice, nor do I preach financial advice. I just want people to make their decisions and create speaking points and open discussion let me know what you guys think in the comments below i look forward to reading your comments thanks for watching